Hello everyone, this is Max with A1 Website Pro, and today we're going to be talking about terminal commands in a Mac, okay, to get you familiar with that so you know what you're doing and you know how to navigate. Now you notice in my dock down here I have terminal because I use it quite a bit. Now if you don't have it in your dock, if you go over to your launch pad and you type in terminal, you can see that it, sh it pops up right there. And I've prepared a few things with you for you that we're going to be going over. Um, these are what we're going to go over. First of all, file pass. And this CD and the command LS is going to be very important to you. Now, I'm going to illustrate how this works. So let's go ahead and go. Don't worry about these birthdays here. So if I type in LS right here, it shows me where I'm at. Okay, it shows me that, you know, I'm in the, the root. I'm in the the foremost directory. Now, I want to navigate to desktop because I'm going to show you some st stuff in this terminal commands folder and how to, you know, uh, create create directories, create files, and so on and so forth. So what I want to do to navigate to the desktop, okay, where I have this terminal commands, I want to type in cd desktop, okay? And if I hit ls, I could see that I have, um, I've navigated my way to the terminal commands folder. Okay, now if you take a look at here, I have desktop storage, which is, you can see that right here. I have a folder called dia, I, you can see that here, a folder called Amazon. Amazon. Now notice this one here, screenshot.png. That would be the file I have with inside this folder on my desktop, my desktop folder. Okay, now let, let me try to navigate to a folder that does not exist. For example, I'll go CD uh, test. Now you notice I do not have a test folder here. And so Bash will tell me that test, no such file or directory. Okay, because I'm not in there. But if I did have a folder called test, I would be able to access it. Now I want to navigate my way to this terminal commands. So I'm going to go CD. I'm going to type in CD, terminal hyphen commands, just like that. And if I open this folder, I'll have this on the right hand side of my screen so you can see what we're about to do. Inside there, I have this image, the image that I'm going to be using for uh, the uh, tutorial and the YouTube video called All About Terminal. So if I type in ls, I can see that that particular file is in there. All right. Now, now that I'm in this folder and you, you know how to navigate, let's say that I want to put a directory in here. Okay. Well, how would I do that? Well, according to, <clears throat> if I want to make a directory, I use this command here, mkdir. All right. So we'll type in mkdir, lowercase mkdir, and then we'll name the directory. We'll call it test. Now you'll notice that instantly test appears over here. All right, so let's make another directory, mkdir, and we'll call this test2. And you'll, you can see here, now we have test2 in our terminal commands directory. All right, now let's navigate inside our folder of test. So if we go CD, T, E, S, T, now I'm inside the folder of test. You can see that here in my command line. So I'm just going to open it up right here, and you can see that it is empty. Now, let's say that I wanted to make a file in here, maybe just a text file. So how we do that is we use the command touch, okay, to make a file. Okay, and I'll have this on A1 Website Pro. So let's go ahead and touch, type in touch, and we'll call this um, test.txt. Now notice that test.txt gets created over here. If I wanted to make an image file, okay, I would use the same thing, touch img dot maybe png, okay, so you can see how I'm creating files 
very easy to do. Let's do touch um, ggg.jpg. That's just another image file, and you can see that there. And what if I wanted to remove one of these files, the ggg file? Well, what I would do is I would type in rm for remove, and I don't know if I have that on my bbedit. No, but I'm showing it to you anyway because it's very important, and I will add it there. So I type in rm ggg dot jpg. I name the file, and you notice that the file gets removed from the folder. Okay, so that's how that's how it works. Now, clicking the back button here is the same as typing cd period period forward slash. Notice I'm back in the terminal commands. Okay, I'm back in there. Now, if I navigate to the folder 2 and I double click it here, it would be the same as going cd test 2. Okay, now you can see here that I'm in test 2 and I'm in the test 2 folder. Now, there's nothing in here. Okay, there's nothing in test two. But let me click the back button. Let's say that I wanted to move everything that was in test to test two. So everything that we have in test here is images test.txt. And let's say that I want to just want to move all those files in the test two directory. How would I do that? First of all, I'm going to make sure that I'm back in terminal command. So I would type CD. Now another thing that you can do is hit arrow up on your keyboard okay and we could now and it'll show us a list of the commands that we had already entered so cd terminal commands was one of them okay let's see what we're where we're at i'm in test two so i want to so this is a good example. I was in test two there was no file directory called terminal commands so I could go cd period period slash now I'm in terminal commands now I can use this um, up and down arrow to to navigate my former my prior entries alright so now I'm going to show you how to move everything from the test directory to the test 2 directory okay because we're in terminal commands and if I type in ls we have the test directory and the test 2 directory so I want to move test and then slash and the asterisk means all it means I want to move everything then a, a space and I want to move it to test two. Whenever I hit enter you'll notice instantly that everything gets moved over to test two. Okay. Now let's say that I just wanted to remove all the files in test two. Okay. Remember the asterisk means all. So I'm going to have to uh, navigate to test two. Excuse me. To test two, and if I hit ls, I could see that I have two files in here. If I type in rm in the asterisk sign, notice what happens. It just removes everything in there. So this is important that you know. Number one, what folder you're in. Number two, how to see the files. Now I'm going to show you one more thing because sometimes there's such a thing as hidden files like HT access files and SSH files and so on and so forth so I'm going to type in touch now notice I'm in test 2 and I got test 2 over here and I'm going to type in dot HT access okay now you notice that I could see it here but if I just type in LS right there you notice I don't get a directory listing but if I type in LS hyphen a I can see that there's an HT access file so that's what that hyphen a does so I can see other files in there all right all right so let's move on with the lesson let's say that I wanted to download a file you know outside of my browser I don't want to bring up Google Chrome and do it maybe the the a1 website pro logo right here we'll just grab this Okay, and right inside here, maybe I'm going to go out to the internet via my terminal here, and I'm going to download a picture there just by typing in 
curl hyphen zero and then the name of the file that I want to download. And I'll hit my return key and you'll notice it does something a little funky here. It goes out and it pulls it off the server and here we go. And I'll double click that and open it up and you can see that is the logo. And you could do that with any file that's out on the internet. You could use your curl hyphen zero and go get it and download it to your computer. All right. Now this is Mac specific commands, all right? Sometimes in different terminals, like if you're in a Ubuntu terminal, you're not going to be able to use Mac commands or a lot of Mac commands. You'll be able to use a lot of Mac commands in Ubuntu, but not all of them. So if you're having a problem, that could be the issue as well. This is Mac specific, okay? All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. I'm going to go ahead and post these other ones and let you try them. You know, you could change the file format for your screenshots and so on and so forth. You could keep your Mac awake. You could see how long your Mac's been running by, you know, typing in uptime. In fact, we'll just go ahead and do that now. You can see uptime. All right, you can see how long the Mac has been using. But a couple, a couple more things that I do want to show you before we go. If you type in clear, that gets rid of everything above, okay? So if I go cd period period slash, it takes me up one folder to the terminal commands. Let me type in clear again, okay? So now I'm in terminal commands. Let's say, though, that you wanted to get an IP address of a website. For instance, a1websitepro.com. Well, what you can do is ping it, okay? You can also, by pinging, you can get packets back. A lot of times, if you ever heard of DDoS attacks, this is what they do. They'll ping a website over and over again to shut it down. But we're going to do it for the purpose of, you know, getting the IP address and seeing uh, the packets and the response. So let's go A1 Website Pro. If I spell it right. Dot com. So we're going to ping that. Now, you'll see it's an unknown host because I misspelled it. So ping A1 Website Pro pro.com now notice that I'm getting the IP address I can see how much data is coming back now to stop this I have to hit control Z all right so we can see that we got back this this amount of data and how long it took all right so let's type in clear once again so we can start from the top now let's say that you wanted to get information about a website owner or maybe the name servers or other detailed information. A lot of that information is located in the Whois database and in the Mac terminal you can just type in Whois and then type in once again a1websitepro.com and it's going to go out and it's going to give us a bunch of information about A1 Website Pro and its owner. Notice there's my email, my name servers out on Cloudflare, my my address, so on and so forth. We can even know uh, we even know when the domain expires, when I purchased it, and so on and so forth. Because there's a lot of different information, uh, you know, that we can find out about a website there. Okay, and uh, so sometimes you might find that useful. But anyway, I'm going to end the lesson here because it's been a lengthy lesson and you have a lot of practice to do, but I'll go ahead and post this stuff up on a1websitepro.com so you can mess around with your Mac and see what kind of creative things that you could do with it. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you and have a very good day.